the X1 credit card. This credit card claims to be the smartest credit card ever made, giving people higher credit limits than ever before, lower fees, and no hard pulls. I don't know how smart it is, but it's definitely interesting and a credit card worth thinking about putting in your pocket. In this video, I'll be breaking down everything about the X1 card, what I think about the X1 card since using it for a month, and how you can skip the waitlist by getting an invite code from me. I'll have chapters in this video, so skip around to the section that is most relevant to you. First, I'll go over the point structure for this card. It's not like traditional credit card points, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. So every purchase you make, you'll get 2x points. However, you can increase the multiplier rate to 3x points on every purchase if you spent over $15,000 during the year. But wait, we're not done. You can also increase the multiplier rate to 4x points on every purchase if you invite friends to join the X1 card family. Both of you will get the 4x points, however, this isn't forever. The 4x multiplier will only last 30 days from when the invited person gets approved for the X1 card. But wait, these aren't the only ways to increase your multipliers. There are other ways too, like what X1 calls a boost. They're the same or at least similar to the Amex and Chase offers, except even more gamified. These boosts will increase the amount of points you get if you follow the game rules. Like for example, as you can see here, X1 is offering me 3x points if I use my X1 card to purchase something at a restaurant. But wait, hold on. Before you activate all the offers, most of these offers have a time limit of 24 hours after you activate the bonus. So the best strategy to maximize points on the X1 card is before you pay for anything, whip out the X1 card app and check your boost categories and activate the boost before you swipe, tap, or insert your X1 card. Another way to increase your multipliers is through almost like a Rakuten style way. There's this tab called Shop, and you'll find a bunch of retailers along with the bonus multipliers next to the store names. A lot of these retailers are brands most people know, and I believe you can only get the bonus multipliers online and only by shopping through the X1 app. Well that sounds great, sounds like you could earn a lot of points. Kinda? So each point is only valued at a maximum of 1 cents per point, and that maximum value is only limited to a statement adjustment at select stores. But most of those stores are places I think you would normally shop at, so not that big of a deal. But let's say you never shop anywhere on that list, like Delta, Apple, or Nike. The other option is to redeem your points as cash value at a lower redemption rate, which is 0.7 cents per point. If you can, for the love of humanity, avoid redeeming your points for this low of cash value, unless you desperately need the cash. In my opinion, there are enough retailers on the X1 list to be able to at least redeem 1 cents per point. Overall, the X1 card points are not worth it when comparing to a 2% cashback card, unless you are able to get the multiplier boost, because the points are only worth as much as 1 one cents per point. With cashback cards like with the city double cash card you can get 2% cash back which then you can use the cash from that to use it again. Of course it's not that much of a difference getting 2% back on 2 pennies, but still slightly better than a 2x unlimited multiplier that can only be redeemed at a maximum value of 1 cents per point. Just wanted to let you know so you can structure the most effective card setup strategy. But I don't think the point value is the most interesting thing about this card. The most interesting thing about the X1 card is the higher limits that the X1 card gives people. I've seen videos of people recently applying for the X1 card getting insane limits for the average person. Even for me, the highest credit limit I've ever gotten through an application alone is the Chase Amazon card, which gave me a $11,300 credit limit. But this was during the time where there were rumors of Amazon cutting off from Chase. So during this time, most people applying for the Chase Amazon card were getting higher credit limits. But the X1 card for me gave me more of an insane credit limit, a $21,500 credit limit. You know what I could do with that? I could buy 21 and a half iPhones or a Toyota Corolla out of pocket. Of course don't do this, but the X1 card seriously gives an insane credit limit that could definitely help your credit score. The credit limits they give X1 claims to use some sort of algorithm that is based off your current and future income. Also they claim your credit limit will increase automatically over time, which is neat. Other features of the X1 card that makes this card smart is automatically canceling free trials that you may have signed up for that you don't want to continue next month. You can also cancel subscription payments in only one click by using the standard virtual card through the X1 app, along with being able to create single use virtual cards. So after you're done using it, it'll auto cancel the virtual card after one purchase so you can't be overcharged. So great, 
This card seems like the right fit for you. But come on, what's the catch? Do they charge an insane interest fee or have some crazy annual fee? Especially for a 17 gram pure stainless steel credit card. Actually, no, one of the lowest. Most credit cards I personally have average around an APR of 22%. The X1 card is the first credit card for me to dip down with an APR of 18.25%. The X1 card claims to have a range between an APR of 12.75% and 19.75%. So for the credit card industry, these APRs APRs are actually not that bad, comparatively. Then what kind of fees do they have then? Actually not that many. There are no annual fees, no foreign transaction fees, no over the limit fees, no late payment fees. However, there is a return to payment fee of $10 and a replacement card fee of $25, which sucks. Many credit cards, even metal credit cards, offer free replacement, especially if you got your card stolen. Maybe they'll weigh the fee if you contact customer support if that would ever happen to you. Which on the topic of customer support, they have texting live chat, which I strongly prefer, over the other methods. You can answer back at any time, won't be disconnected, and can do other things than wait for someone to answer the phone. Speaking of convenience, just a quick note, if you ever for some reason needed your X1 card numbers and you don't have the physical card, the app keeps a mock card with the actual card numbers you can unlock to see. A plus on this feature, more credit cards should have this. Now what if you want this card? What does the application process look like? Well first, at the moment, only people in the waitlist of 350,000 or people invited through a code, like the one I'm giving away in this video, are the only ones that can apply for the X1 card as of right now. But if you are able to apply for this card, it's pretty straightforward, with only a soft pull to determine if you're qualified. First you'll be directed to enter your name, date of birth, and your phone number. Then you'll get a code texted to your phone. You have to enter the code to continue with the application. Next, you'll have to enter your address, social security number, and annual income, just like any standard credit card application. After you enter all that information, then you'll be redirected to a page to tell whether or not you're qualified. If you are, they'll ask for your banking information so they can hook up their algorithm to your bank to determine your credit limit. This might take a while, but just continue to stay on the page until it's finished. Then BAM, your credit limit will be displayed with confetti. All you have to do at this point is agree and continue, and you can start using your new X1 card today with a digital wallet, and later in the mail you'll get the physical card. Just a strong warning, I know there are rumors flying around that the X1 card won't do any hard pulls. I'm going to tell you now, they will do a hard pull on your credit. After I accepted the card, for me, they pulled my Experian credit score. So keep that in mind if you're still wanting to go through applying for the X1 card, if a hard pull would make a difference for you. So after all this, what do I think of the X1 card? It's fine. Not the best card in terms of point value, but their multipliers aren't bad, keeps things interesting and gamey. The physical card you get is pretty thick. Feels really similar to the American Express Platinum card without the high annual fee. The smart features of the X1 card doesn't really make a difference to me because I put all of my free trial subscriptions in my calendar so I get alerted when to cancel them. But 100% the X1 card would make the whole process of canceling subscriptions easier, no doubt. But I think the biggest reason to apply for the X1 card is because of the higher credit limits they give people to decrease utilization rate and thereby most likely increase your credit scores. So it's not a bad card to apply for and carry. But those are my thoughts of the X1 card from using it for a month. Also I have a short of me unboxing the X1 one card if you want to check that out. Now for the invite codes. I have a total of three invite codes I can give away. So subscribe if this video helped you out and comment why you would want to apply for the X1 card. And I'll randomly select three winners after two days this video is posted. If you're the winner, I'll leave a reply on your comment and then just send me a message using your Twitter or Instagram username and I'll give you the code. You will have five days to message me or I'll select new winners. But yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for your support and 100 subs. I really do appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you in my next video.